Now that we know that demand curve is downward sloping, I want to distinguish between quantity demanded versus demand. When we say quantity demanded, we mean to say quantity bought at a particular price. Which means that whenever there is a change in price, we don't say demand changes, we say quantity demanded changes because quantity bought at a particular price will change. I want to show you this with uh, the help of a demand curve. When we look at our demand curve, which is downward sloping, if I say the price is P0, then I will say that the quantity demanded will be Q0. I can't say demand for will be Q0 because that will be wrong because we are looking at quantity bought at a particular price. So quantity demanded will be Q0. On the other hand, if the price, for example, goes to P1, now the price goes down, we will say the quantity demanded has gone up. So this is, while this is the demand for a particular good, let's say this is the demand for uh, cars. Let me label this price and quantity. So when this is the demand for cars, while the quantity demanded will be the quantity bought at a particular price, which is, for example, at P0, the quantity demanded is Q0, while at P1, the quantity demanded is Q1. So one could also say this, that whenever there is a change in price, there will be a change in quantity demanded. We won't say there will be a change in demand, but we will say there is a change in quantity demanded. Also, importantly, we can say this, that any movement along the curve, let me write this, any will result in a change in quantity demanded. So now let's talk about what will change our demand. We know that quantity demanded is changed through any change in price because that will result in a movement along the demand curve. But let's talk about what we call the factors that can affect demand. Or in other words, we call that determinants, determinants or factors that affect demand. So when you look at determinants of demand, we actually distinguish them between what we call the price factor, which is something which we've been discussing in the last video and this one also. And then there is a non-price factor. The price factor is basically when the price of a good changes, we have seen this, that this change in price, this triangle, by the way, means change, change in price will lead to a change in quantity bought or change in quantity demanded, which is basically a movement along the demand curve. So the first determinant of demand is basically the price of the good itself, which will result in a change in quantity demanded. But there could also be a non-price factor which is playing a role. So far, you know, when we were looking at the, when the price of a good goes down, we saw the quantity demanded to go up. And our assumption here was this, that, we ha uh, that we're keeping everything else constant. What if now I change that assumption and what if I say, you know what, let's just figure out what will happen if all other factors are not constant. Let's say, for example, you know, um, something changes which results in us to buy more of the good. For example, you know, like in winters, people buy more of uh, sweaters or jackets because it's pretty useful. So if the, if the other factors change, what will be happening to our demand. And that's what we call non-price factors. Non-price factors are the factors that we'll, we'll soon see will result in the shift of the demand curve. So when you look at the price factors, they are causing what we call a movement along the demand curve, while non-price factors will result in what we call a shift of the demand curve. Before I talk about the factors that make the shift of the demand curve happen, I want to show you how the shift of the demand curve look like. So that will be useful first to see how the demand curve shifts to the right or to the left. And by the way, when the demand curve shifts to the right, we say the demand is increasing. So for example, if this is your demand curve, and let's say, stick with the example of cars, let's say this is demand for cars, right? And um, something which is a non-price factor can make the demand curve to shift to the right. 
and this what we call is a rise in demand why is that so because pick any price let's say p naught if you were previously buying q naught you will now buy more of that good you'll buy q1 right similarly if i want to show you a decrease in demand i will shift the demand curve backward something like that so if your demand initially was d naught and now you are buying for the same price p naught you are buying now for example q2 right let's call this d2 so for for example now for the same price p naught you are buying less like q2 this means the demand is going down so one could argue this that price is not the reason why demand is changing because for the same price if somebody is buying more it could be something which is not related to price probably a non price factor similarly if for the same price p not you're buying less this means demand is going down or demand is decreasing so let me also write this that when you go from d not to d1 we call it rise or increase in demand but when we go to from d not to d2 we call it fall in demand Let's now look at factors that affect demand. The first factor that affects demand is income. We use the symbol in economics Y for income. And uh, we say this, that there are two kinds of good that are affected through income. One is what we distinguish as normal good. And another one is what we call inferior good. Normal good is a good where whenever income go up, we will find the demand to go up. A good example of this could be, you know, foreign vacations. So if uh, income for any individual go up, their purchasing power will go up, their uh, ability to buy it will go up, and they may undertake foreign vacation, which probably previously was not possible. So for a normal good, any increase in income will result in an increase in demand. And I could, I could say here that keeping everything else constant, you will see the demand to rise. On the other hand, inferior goods are those goods when income go up, we will find the demand to go down. A good example of this could be, you know, our bus travel. If, uh, for example, your income go up, you might decide to now travel less by bus, you undertake less bus journeys, but in instead, you decide to travel more by car. So that could be a good example of, of an inferior good where your income going up may lead you to buy less of that good, that good. So how do I show that in terms of our diagram? So in terms of our diagram, what we will see is for normal goods, we will find that the demand curve will shift to the right. If this was my demand curve D0, my demand curve may shift to D1. And that means that for each and every price level, a consumer is willing and able to buy more. And so because it's a shift of demand curve, we call it a non-price factor because it's not the price that is making us buy more. It's a rise in income that is making us buy more. So for example, I can write here, uh, it could be a demand for foreign vacation on the other hand when you look at an inferior good you will see that the demand will fall why because when an income go up when our income go up demand curve shifts backward uh, so when people find their income rises they may decide to take they may decide to undertake less bus journeys and probably more car journeys so this will be shifting backward from Q0 to Q1. Now, you can say that this is not a change in quantity demanded. This is a change in demand because irrespective of whatever the price is, the demand curve is shifting backward. So an inferior good example could be your bus journey where when the income go up, our demand is actually falling. Another important factor that affects our demand is what we call price of related goods. Here also we look at two kinds of uh, goods. One is what we call substitutes. 
and another one is what we call complements. A substitute is a good which we say can be replaced by another good. In other words, it's a good that is what we call in competitive demand. A good example of this is tea and coffee. So when you look at demand for tea, coffee becomes what we call a substitute to it. Economic theory predicts that a fall in the price of one good, for example, tea, will lead to a decrease in demand for a substitute, that is coffee. And I want to show you this through diagram. So what happens is this, that in a market for tea, if tea becomes expensive for some reason or the other, let's say if this is my, my demand curve for tea, and if tea becomes expensive, let's say from P0 to P1, we can see, see this that there is a fall in quantity demanded because for the tea market, it's a movement along the curve, it's a price factor. So the price of tea has gone up. Let me write this price of tea has gone up. It has caused the quantity demanded of tea to go down. Now, because tea has become expensive, what will happen is that a lot of people will now substitute tea with coffee. They will switch to the cheaper substitute and that could be good news for coffee because in the market for coffee, so let's write coffee here, right? In the market for coffee, the demand curve will be shifting to the right. Why? Because now for coffee, it's a non-price factor which is making the demand curve shift to the right. So the demand curve will shift to the right for coffee because tea is becoming ex expensive. So that is what we call a good that is in competitive demand will actually benefit in this case, causing the demand to go up. Now, not all consumers will switch. Of course, some may be you know, deeply committed to tea and even if tea becomes expensive, they may not want to switch because they have brand loyalty or they have a taste that takes much longer to adapt to coffee. But definitely, there will be some switching that will take place. Similar to our uh, substitutes, we also have what we call complements. Complements, what we call, are in joint demand. And when I say joint demand, these, this means that goods that are consumed together. We say they are consumed together because people have a, a consumption behavior that requires both these goods to be consumed together. For example, tea and milk. Tea and milk are a good example for, for a lot of countries uh, where tea and milk is consumed together. And we will see that uh, whenever there's a fall in the price of one good, for example, tea, there will be an increase in the demand for its complement, which is milk, because more uh, tea consumed will result in more milk to be demanded. We can draw a diagram to see this. So what we have here is, is uh, demand for tea and demand for milk. So these are the two markets. And let's assume for some reason uh, tea becomes cheaper. If tea becomes cheaper, that is what we call a movement along the demand curve for tea. So when the price of tea goes down, you will be seeing quantity demanded for tea to go up because we know that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, and this is what we call a movement along the demand curve. On the other hand, because tea is becoming cheaper and a lot of people are now drinking tea, for that reason, you will see the demand for milk to go up. So demand curve will shift to the right. So for each and every price, we can say that there is more milk to be consumed because now people are drinking more tea. So here the demand for tea, demand for milk will go up. There are many other factors that can also affect demand. We can say uh, a change in 
taste of fashion can also affect demand. For example, the more desirable pe- people find a good, the more they will demand. Um, and we saw um, in the past, there are many times uh, there are some fashion fads that happen. You know, some people start to uh, wear skinny jeans. Other people start to sometimes wear um, you know, loose jeans. And so all of these are what we call change in fashion and taste, and that can affect demand. And taste can be affected by many things. They can be affected by advertising. You know, a lot of firms are spending money in advertising, and successful advertising can result in demand for a good to go up. Or it can be affected by fashion, which is simply um, how trends are changing. And lastly, it can also be affected by, you know, observing other consumers. You have now these uh, social media and other influencer who are trying to push for goods. So this is what we call observing other consumers that can also make the change in taste or fashion to happen and can change the demand. And, c- and demand can both go up or go down depending on, of course, uh, whether the change in taste or fashion is favorable, f- favorable for you or not. Another factor that can change our demand could be what we call uh, distribution of income. Now, if the distribution of income becomes uh, unfair, when I say distribution of income, I'm looking at distribution of income of the whole economy. So if the distribution of the in- of income in an economy, you know, like a, in a country becomes unfair, if it becomes unfair, that means basically the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. This would mean that when the rich are getting richer, you will see the demand for some goods to go up. So what kind of goods will go up? Uh, what kinds of uh, goods will benefit and the answer is luxury goods luxury goods are those goods which only the rich consume they will see, you will see a demand to go up so the expensive car the expensive vacation the expensive uh, food items will all benefit whenever there is uh, the f- the rich getting richer to happen on the other hand the demand for inferior goods which is basically those goods which are consumed by uh, people with low income so those demand those goods will also see their demand to go up on why because uh, the the poor is getting poorer he will switch away from the the more expensive goods or the uh, the normal goods and he will start buying more inferior goods lastly there is also a factor called expectation of future price change what do we mean by this if consumers believe that you know uh, prices will fall in the future, they are likely to buy more later when the prices fall, and, and this has been very common with the uh, you know like those high tech products, you know like when whenever a new technology comes, it's more expensive initially, and uh, only some people buy, and s- other people wait for the price to go down, and as soon as the price goes down, they buy that good. So the idea goes this: if we believe that price will fall in the future then we can expect the demand to fall right now but rise rise later there are many other factors uh, which i have not discussed which can affect demand for example uh, for some goods um, whenever there's a rise in population you will see the demand to go up like for example baby food or baby clothing could be an example of that also in summers for example you will see hot drinks uh, to be less in demand and cold drinks to be more in demand and that could be weather playing a role so all of these factors are also factors that can affect demand for goods 